I've now had Sony's PlayStation 5 game console for three years, and I've used it to play games in a variety of formats, watch movies from different physical media disc formats, and to stream videos and movies from various services. However, as far as modern gaming platforms go, I also own an Xbox Series X, a Nintendo Switch, a high-end gaming PC, and a Valve Steam Deck. And after having the PS5 for three years and using it how I've described, do I think the system was really worth buying when I did? Stay tuned, because today we're breaking down my experience with the console over the last few years, from the initial excitement of acquiring a PS5 and it's the plague of scalpers we all saw, to the present day where I'll share my honest thoughts about how I think this console's faring on the tumultuous seas of time. We'll also touch on the evolving landscape of our gaming preferences, the impact of daily life on our leisure time, and the unique value that the PlayStation 5 might be able to bring to your gaming setup. For some background, I bought my PlayStation 5 on February 23rd, 2021. I paid retail price for it through GameStop Online, and my order was sold as a bundle that came with Spider-Man Miles Morales, two DualSense controllers, and a $20 GameStop gift card. I remember feeling incredibly lucky and frankly surprised to have successfully obtained it when I did, because the system had only been available for a few months at that point, and scalpers with bots were making it nearly impossible for ordinary folks to be able to secure one anywhere at retail price. Before this lucky PS5 acquisition, I owned a PlayStation 4 that I I bought back in 2015 for the launch of Fallout 4. In the years between the PS4 and the PS5, I actually never upgraded to the PS4 Pro, opting instead to wait a while and eventually to see what the Xbox ecosystem was like by purchasing an Xbox One X in the summer of 2018. Back in 2017 and 18, I was really getting into watching movies on physical media, specifically with the goal of expanding my knowledge around horror films, B-movies, and some sci-fi. It feels kind of funny to reflect on now, but the fact that the Xbox One X had a 4K disk drive in it that could play 4K Blu-ray discs, something that the PS4 Pro ironically could not do, was actually a big selling point for me. Flashing forward to 2020 when the PS5 was officially unveiled, my personal hype level is probably around a 7.5 out of 10. But why, you ask? First, I remember the launch lineup having me only mildly interested with games like Miles Morales, Bug Snacks, and Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, initially being the only games that really I felt myself being excited to buy and then play early on. I know I wouldn't want to fight my dad. Second, and from a technology perspective, I was feeling very ready to upgrade from the old PS4 spinning hard drive, so I do recall feeling relieved that the PS5 had a really fast SSD and was happy to think about the amount of time that would wind up saving myself and everyone else playing one for the years to come. And finally, with regard to its design aesthetic, I remember thinking that the PS5 looked sleek, futuristic, and distinct, whereas the Xbox Series X looked kind of uninspired and bland. I know some folks did not and do not like the look of the PS5, but I was fully in the camp that appreciated its smooth, wavy panels. Oh, so gross. Brother, this guy <laughs> and so this brings us to the most important question of the video. Is the PlayStation 5 worth it? Based on my experience, and as you've probably gotten a pretty good sense of over the course of this video so far, the PS5 I've got is still very much worth it to me, and I'm really grateful that I was able to get one when I did. Sony's first party games have continued to impress in the years following the system's launch. I'm able to continue chipping away at my backlog of physical and digital PS4 games on faster, more powerful hardware. And truth be told, I've already developed some nostalgia for the PS5 and some of the games I've played on it. <laughs> I got this system right around the time when a pretty low point in my life was ending, and I have very fond memories of the games I played on it in 2021 and 2022 in particular. I played the full Dark Souls series, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and the Demon's Souls remake for the first time on this thing, all in preparation for Elden Ring's release in 2022, which I also played on the PS5 for the first time. Truly, it was a year of sweet agony and punishing ecstasy in equal measure. Oh, and I recently picked up a PSVR 2 headset, which has opened up a whole subcategory of gaming that I simply haven't experienced on any other hardware till now. In any case, there's the undeniable fact that I'm now a man in his mid-30s with family and friends that I increasingly want to spend more time with, way too many competing hobbies and interests, and shifting preferences around the types of games and experiences that I'm willing to give my time to. I've realized I value convenience, novelty, and quality more than ever. To share my perspective, if a game I might want to play is multi-platform, I first investigate how that game performs on PC, as well as whether it'll run well on Steam Deck. If that multi-platform non-console exclusive is not on Steam, I'll see if it's on PS5, Xbox Series X, or Nintendo Switch as well as where I'm likely to have the best experience in terms of performance. Ultimately, I think the PS5 is a super capable, unique, and attractive game console that just about any gaming curious person would find useful and fun to play, especially if it was their only gaming system. I also think it would be an excellent additional option if you're someone who already has an Xbox Series or Nintendo Switch system. If that's you, owning a PS5 will help expand your horizons and give you access to a bunch of killer exclusives that are only on PS5. However, if you're someone who already has a mid-range or high-powered PC, and if you 
do. I'm sure you already know what I'm about to say. I would caution that adding a PS5 to your hardware options could actually be less helpful to you given the flexibility and performance that a PC provides, but Again, you already knew that. There's also the fact that a bunch of decent offerings from Sony's first party studios have been finding their way over to PC in recent years. With that said, one, if there are some PlayStation exclusive games that you really wanna play and, two, you would prefer not to play those games on your PC for some reason, or you want to be able to play those games in multiple places, a PS5 is a fantastic choice to make that happen. Well, what do you think? Do you have a PS5? And if so, is it one of the digital only or disc drive editions? Or perhaps one of the newer models that now supports a detachable disc drive? If you've got a PS5, how are you feeling about it? today, and what do you think about Sony's strategy for the PlayStation brand and the games in its future? Let me know in the comments, and if you're curious to hear what my thoughts are about the Xbox Series X and the time I've had it so far, click right here to find out.